Right, so in the previous video, I built um, one of the first packages in the security chapter, which was Make CA, which provided a certificate authority um, certificates for uh, secure connections and so on. One thing I didn't do was to show that in action. So what I'm going to do is to log in and show you an example where it is actually working now. Um, well, actually, I guess the best thing to do is just to get on with compiling because I'm going to be downloading stuff from uh, secure websites. I'll do one as a wget and then I'll just carry on using the links browser to download and you'll see that with wget I don't need to have to put that extra extra switch in to tell it to ignore the certificates and likewise with links I won't have to answer uh, yes to do I want to ignore it. So I'm on my terminal one I'm going to switch to the virtual terminal five and do the same as yesterday and load up um, the browser on this terminal. So once again I log in as the unprivileged user in both terminals I'm changing to the sources BLFS directory and with the links let's see if I can find the link so that's the make CL link so I'll, I'll just use that one and you can see straight away it's gone in without asking me uh, any questions about the certificate so that proves that links is working I'm gonna press the uh, backspace will I be able to all oh, right okay yeah uh, it I can't it's not tracking Sorry, the, the left arrow and the backspace is all about the history of pages I've been to. So what I'll have to do is to actually use the links within the web page to uh, maneuver around. So I need to go up here to go back to the uh, chapter about security with all the links for the security packages. Um, so now if I go to, I think, uh, let me just take a look at these. I think Linux PAM is going to be the next one I'll go for because it will allow me to install PAM and any other packages that require um, or have the capability to be secured via PAM. So I'll go into that and you can see again straight away there's no questions, nothing like that. Um, so let's look at this before I download that because this has got some dependencies. Um, I think I'll go into the graphical web browser. It'll be easier to manage the dependencies from here. So Linux PAM, I'll open this in a new tab. I'll just move that over. Um, I think these two links in WGET have got further dependencies to install. Yeah, so. I'll defer them for the moment. Yeah, I'll get the um, other security packages done first of all, um, and then come back to them, and then we can move finally on to getting, starting to get the um, X Windows system built. So Linux PAM, let's see what this needs. It needs optionally these packages so, so I normally go for the optional packages within the book unless for example I know I specifically uh, don't need them such as these links here which is just to rebuild documentation I'm not going to bother with that uh, so let's go to lib tier. oh let's start with Barclay actually show you tools that needs so I'll install uh, open that one show you tools LibNSL that requires RPV, RPSVC Proto and LibTIRPC which we've got to 
installed here, so that's good. Um, this needs option in MIC Kerberos. So Kerberos, you probably wouldn't need that on a standalone desktop. Um, it may be something you need if you've got the machine in a larger organization. Um, but I guess you'd probably know um, whether you needed Kerberos or not. So I'm not going to install that this time around. I did last time because I was going through installing as much as I could from the manual that made made sense really uh, but this time I don't think that is necessary certainly not for the majority of people I wouldn't have thought so it looks like libtir pc libtir pc I don't know exactly what it stands for um, but yeah let's let's go for that one first so I need to go back to this main menu and oh I'll just follow the links actually that's the best way. So there it is there off the PAM dependency list. There's the link for the package. I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to download this one with wget to prove that wget doesn't ask me for that message. So wget center tab enter. It's going to source forge. Yep it's downloaded it fine no questions. Um, it looks like it's worked. It's about half a megabyte so the only real sure way of checking that it has worked is by expanding it and yes that's fine so that shows that that makes CA's yeah, installed the certificates they're installed correctly such that two programs that we know uses those certificates certificate authorities uh, are actually working and using that, that information so that's all good So let's switch back and start building these. Uh, so we've got a configure command here, make, make install. Let's just check any extra options. So need a disable GSS API if no GSS API is installed. So that's in the instructions by default. So that's good. So let's copy this. And compile this package. As I said yesterday, if I start finding I'm getting errors with the tests, I'm actually going to disable the um, optimization flags. Uh, it's going to get away. If I did really want to use them, then I'd be expecting failures and I would go out of my way to try and fix those failures but um, in this environment where I'm trying to demonstrate the building of BLFS with uh, as few hiccups as possible it's not something I want to really get involved in. There's no test suite on this one so it's just a make install. So, so I haven't installed sudo yet, I don't think if I know. Make install. That's done. Let's just check there's no other commands to run as root. No, that's that package done then. Okay, back to the browser and move, press the left button Let's go back to PAM now I'll check what chapter this is in chapter 17 networking libraries so I'm going to mark this off my paper list that I've got TIRPC is done. I'm going to remove that tab from the browser and move on to the next package which is RPC SVC and this is dependency of libnsl which was dependency of Linux PAM again. 
So lib NSL. And then RPC SVC. And there it is. So let's download the package. Save it to disk. Left arrows go back. So installation install it with those commands. No test suite install, and that's it. Quite a simple package to install. So tar minus xvf rpc cd rpc. So it really is quite a simple set of instructions. Okay, I'm going to try a different command to run the make install command in case uh, make install is the instructions again to install. I can recall this command without having to change the root, type of password, and then log out of root. Oh, type the right password in. And that's done. So I'll just switch back. There's no other configuration so for the package. So I'll just clear that up. RPC. Move back to the browser. Move that tab because it's done. And then I've got libnsl. Again, this is a quite a simple package, no test suite. And I forgot to mark it off my paper list first, so it's chapter 17 again. RPC SVC. So lib NSL, so I press the left arrow. This is lib NSL. D to download. Enter to save, enter again to use the file name it's given, left arrow, and copy these commands, uh, lib nsl wasn't it, yep, paste the commands in, Wait for it to build. That's complete. So let's go back here, see what we need to do next. Just make install. So as I say, I'm going to recall the install command. That's a little bit easier. And that's done. Tidy that up. And go to my browser next. See what chapter it's in, chapter 17 again, lib NSL. Cross that off as complete. Close the tab down and move on to Shar Utils. Let's just have a quick look here. It's so much easier to see the instructions um, and it's quite easy to miss bits on the text browser. Um, I think it's easier for me to miss bits because I'm kind of used to installing these programs and sort of tend to focus in on the common bits, so like the configure and the install, and then I tend to miss other bits. So if I go to the Shar Utils page, I might be able to oops, 
demonstrate that a bit better. So it's under Barclay DB this link. Um, yeah, see, although it's quite obvious it says installation show utils, I might my eyes might just scan down to the configure line uh, and then ignore this. Where really I should be reading every single line. It's just that a lot of it is noise, like this line here. Well. It's not noise, but a lot of it's so common between pages is it is easy just to skip over the bits you can sort of kind of recognize. You tend to want to focus in the bits that you're interested in. So with the web browser, it's easier to see a lot more at once on the page and then yeah, your eyes sort of focusing on the structure of the layout. Um, plus, it's also immediately obvious that the commands you want to put in are in gray boxes, whereas you don't get that on the screen the the commands you're typing in look exactly the same as the comments there's no gaps or anything between the uh, comments before the commands so it's quite easy even just to copy the wrong commands and so on so um, I imagine this would help you as well if you could did have access to some visual uh, graphical layout of the manual but it still wouldn't be impossible if I did just have the terminal. Um, I know I'd have to force myself to take a bit more care in what I was doing. So show utils. Um, don't think I've downloaded this yet. No, that's not there yet. So let's go back. Go up to the link. Let's extract that. Change into it. And copy the commands. So, so this is where it's careful. You've got to be careful that I can't just copy this lot because I'll be copying that comment there. And now on its own, it might not, it probably doesn't look like it's going to have any. Um, or it wouldn't have any effects because there's no although there is an install command there's not one as far as I know beginning with capital I but there could be you just don't know so it it just shows that you have to be careful what you are copying so I'm just going to copy these two sets paste them in go back copy the next two commands or well, in fact more than that because you can see these ampersands at the end of these lines they're connecting all these commands together so that if one fails, the subsequent commands won't run. That enables you to see that there's been an error. So I think this takes a few minutes to build this one. I think it was about half an SBU and we've got a test to run and then we install it. So just wait for this to complete. It's done. So now let's run make check.
That's all done, all passed, so that's good. Let's see about installing it, so it's just normal make install, I'm going to recall that command I had again. There it is there, install. And that's that package finished. So back to my browser. Uh, before I shut it down, it's chapter 11. I need to mark it off on my paper list. Show you tools. Shut that tab down. And now on to Barclay DB. Let's a quick look at this. So I've got a said, we've got some config and make make install a chain command got some extra commands to add in extra options rather to add into the configure so let's have a look at these these are all part of the standard commands or configure commands okay so optionally we could add these this option here because it enables TCL support if you needed that in the in the database and creates the libdb tcl libraries um, and if we had java installed that might be an option so if that was important to you uh, to create java libraries then uh, you may want to come back to install this database again at a later point when java installed java's got quite a few dependencies so it's not something i'd be looking at doing now um, and it's not it's not even listed as an optional dependency so we'll ignore that but I think I might add this in because we have got TCL installed it was installed as part of Linux from scratch pretty sure it was uh, in fact I'll just check that uh, back here yes it is there yeah so that's something I think I'll add in. So let's go back. We're in Berk Berkeley DB, Berkeley DB. Let's download it. So this is quite a big package, um, but it looks like it takes 0.6 SPUs. Um, whether that includes testing or not, I'm not sure. Okay, save to disk. Go back, let's get it extracting. Okay, what's the file name called? DB-5. DB-5. Well, that's installing, let's see what we need to do. Uh, sorry, extracting. So we've got one said. See that how easy it could be just to skip down and copy this. And we've got a comment in the middle there. So cddb center click, that's pasted in. Now we've got the configure command, so I'm going to copy it up to there. Paste that in, put a space in, go back, look for this other option here. Well, there's actually two options. Paste those in, put another space in, go back again, go back up a page and finish the rest of the stacked commands. Paste that in. Before I run it, I'm just going to check that there's no mistakes there like spaces missed out or anything like that looks okay press enter and let it cut but compile I imagine this will take a, another few minutes five minutes maybe
Right, so that's finished. Let's go and see if we need to run a test. It doesn't look like there is a test, it's just a install command and a chone on some files. So let's copy all that. So that's the installation. While that's installing, I'll get the rest of the command. Oh, looks like that is the end of the command. Yes, it is. There's no um, continuation character on the end of the last line. So it looks like that's all completed then. Let's see if there's any configuration. No, that's it. That's the end of that installation. So it's created a sub or gone into a subdirectory, so I need to go back up twice. Clean up. Go to my graphical browser. It's in chapter 22 databases and mark it off. So it's actually two databases we've installed in the system now, but Barclay and Barclay DB and SQLite. Um, chances are I'll be installing at least one more. There's MariaDB there. Um, there's a good chance that will be installed as well later on. So I can get rid of that. It's completed. And now we're on to Linux PAM. So this has got um, a little bit of configuration to do uh, for testing as well as for the final um, system configuration and then as you see there the next thing we've got to do is to install the shadow package straight afterwards um, otherwise I think that's because this gets disabled by the installation of PAM so we've got to be careful what we copy and paste in this one so let's go back to the browser here back to Linux PAM let's download the package save the disk and there's some additional documentation here which I'm going to download save that to disk and it does say here shadow 4.9 needs to be reinstalled after installing configuring Linux PAM and with Linux PAM 1.40 and higher the PAM crackleak module is not installed by default to enforce strong passwords it's recommended to use libpw quality 1.4.4 and some user notes so I'm just going to check to see if that I think it tells you at some point when to install that yeah it's so it's strange we've got to install Linux PAM then halfway through the configuration uh, it looks like um, we install libpw quality and then we come back here and finish the configuration so I'd have to remember that so that's after the or just before the restrictive other package after we've done some default configuration right so need to keep my wits about with this one so let's come down here installation first prevent the installation of an unneeded system D file right so let's extract so Linux PAM is capital L I N U X So let's paste that first set of commands in. While it's running, let's read the next bit. If you downloaded the documentation, unpack the tarball by issuing the following command. So we'll grab that. So that auto reconf is finished. We can paste this 
documents command in. Uh, if you instead want to regenerate the documentation, so we'll ignore that. Install PAM, Linux PAM, by running the following commands. Let's have a copy of that. And then I'm going to quickly look at the web browser to see what other options there are. For the installation. And it doesn't look like there's anything in particular, which is good, it keeps it nice and simple. So let's go back and copy the rest of the configuration and the make command. Okay, so that's built. Let's move on to test. To test results, a suitable ETC PAMD other configuration file must exist. Uh, there's a comment there about if you're reinstalling or upgrading PAM. Um, but for a first installation, create the configuration file by issuing the following commands as a root user. So this is uh, like a dummy configuration file purely for testing so we need to become the root to do this I would believe let's just check that yeah that's the root user so paste that in Now run a test by issuing make check. Okay, so I'll time this, I'm not sure how long this will take. Okay, well, that seems to be successful. There's no errors and um, couldn't see anything as it was whizzing by. So take that as a success. Only in the first case of an installation, which this is, remove the configuration file that was created temporarily for the tests. Now as a root user, we'll install the package. And when that's done, we install. Yeah, it's still going. We install. I'm not 
not sure about this command here, so I'm just going to look at the graphical browser, see what that's talking about. Okay, so it's part of the command explanations. Oh, I see now. Yeah, it's part of the explanation of the installation. Right, okay. Uh, and then we're on to the configuration. So, okay, that's done. So we can put these configuration scripts in. Uh, so configuring config files. So we'll look at this again. All oh, right, okay. So this is showing an example of a configuration file, um, how it'd be laid out. But then we've got instructions here further down um, for actual files to be installed. So press the space bar to get to these installed instructions. I want to copy all of this, paste that in, next page, and then copy these four lines here as well, and that's done. If you wish to enable strong password support, install libpw quality, and follow the instructions in that page. So I'm going to do that now, and then we'll carry on with the rest of the configuration for PAM. Press enter there. I'm going to open up a new terminal. Ready for this package. And it means I can switch back to my original terminal to carry on with the PAM installation. So let's have a look at this on the browser actually. So we're down to here now. Right, this requires cracklib. Recommended Linux PAM. Well, it's, it is installed now. It's just not, the configuration is just not complete. So let's get cracklib up. Right, so there's just a simple, relatively simple installation. Looks like there might be some extra, possibly some extra commands here. We'll look at that when we come to install it. Okay, so we need to jump in to the Cracklib link, which is there, and download the package. And also, uh, we need uh, at least one dictionary, and it gives one here for English speaking countries, but it also gives a list, uh, a link for other word lists. Um, which uh, I presume would also be available in different languages. Um, but as it says, you can download and install as many as you like. But I'm going to just stick with the defaults. So there's an explanation there about um, how this works, which I'll let you read. Uh, so we've got the start of the installation here. So oh, I'm in terminal two at the moment. So let's extract cracklib 2.9.7. Okay, and we can start the initial configuration. So there's that said plus a blank line there. You can see this double ampersand. So it shows that the there's going to be more commands uh, continuing on the next page. And we'll go to that next page now. And you can see there they are there. Let's copy up to 
this bit of the configure command in case it's, oops, get to the right terminal in case there's any other options we might want to install. So I'm just going to quickly look at the graphical browser for this. So I've got Python equals Python 3 explains that the C CPP flags option with default dict is there. Disable static and that's it. So there isn't any extra options offered by the book. So I can just accept this default. So I'll just copy the rest of this configure command and the make command to get it configuring and installing but again in the right window there you go and that's done that was quick so back to the browser and the next thing we've got to do is make install So, su, oh, uh, let's recall the command actually. In fact, maybe I should have become root because there's still uh, more configuration to be done as root, but not to worry. So that's the installation done. Then it says issue the following commands as a root user to install the recommended word list and create the cracker dictionary. Other word lists text base one per line can also be used by simply installing them into user shared dict and adding them to the create cracklib dict command so we've only used the default one so we'll just copy and paste what's there I'm going to become the root and copy all these commands in here And that's completed. If desired, check the proper operation of the library as an unprivileged user by issuing the following command. And there's an important note there. If you are installing Cracklib after your LFS system has been completed and you have the shadow package installed, you must reinstall shadow 4.9 if you wish to provide strong password support in your system. If you're now going to install Linux PAM package, you may disregard this note as shadow will be reinstalled after Linux PAM. Right, I didn't see that there's actually a command there. Oh, make test, sorry. I've missed that. See, that looks like that's wrapped around as one sentence and it hasn't. So again, the text browser hasn't highlighted that in any way, probably because it's maybe difficult to do, whereas the graphical browser, it would have been obvious. There it is there. It's in its own little box. It's bold font. It's grey background it's just really obvious so I'm going to run this test it says to run it as an unprivileged user so I'll come out of the root paste in the command and that looks like that's a pass there's no errors and that looks like that's the end of the package so let's go to the graphical browser yes it's in the security chapter so it's again it's one of, another one of the security packages that is getting installed as part of the standard installation if you like so I'll cross that off I'll close the tab down and I'm going to go back to yes this is this lib, lib deep pw quality next isn't it to which is for linux pam to complete that and then we can go and do shadow yeah so i need to go back to lib pw quality on this window here so i'll press the left arrow we should be in lib pw quality we are so i can download this package now Save it to disk, go back, and so we've got Linux PAM installed already, 
the recommendation. We've just done Cracklib, so we can start the installation of it. So I'm going to go back to my second terminal, tidy this up. Extract the PW quality. Change into it, and we can start copying and pasting the commands for the installation. Um, I don't think there was any extra command options. Let's just have a quick look. There's one there with Python binary equals Python three, and that's it. Yep, so again, just copy and paste this to build it. And that's done. There's no test suite, so as the root user, make install. That's all complete. Configuring libpw quality, it's intended to be a functional replacement for the now obsolete PAM crackrib.sopam module. To configure the system to use PAM PW quality module, execute the following commands as the root user. So it looks like let's copy at least to there. So once again, I've got to become root. Paste that in. That's worked. So look at the next page. And it's content. So that's it. That's the end of the installation for... Oh, I've done it in the wrong window, have I? No, I haven't. No, that's the end of the installation for libpw quality. So come out of that and tidy up. Okay. Go to the graphical browser. Again, this is in the security chapter. So there it is there. Cross that off. And close that tab down. Now we're back to the Linux PAM configuration. It looks like the only bit left to do is this one cat command here to create um, uh, an other configuration file for the system. So let's go uh, back to the browser, back to Linux PAM. Yep, it's just this bit here that needs to be added in. Um, I'm done with this terminal, so it's the first virtual terminal I need to go to, although it doesn't really matter where I am, I'm, I am as, as the root, which is what's required. I'll paste that in. So that should be Linux PAM completed now. But we've got this important note, you should now reinstall the Shadow 4.9 package. So that's what I'm going to do next. Um, after I've ticked off Linux PAM, so I'll get the Shadow 4.9 tab up. So Linux PAM, yes, again, it's in the security package, obviously, because that's where we started. I'll cross that off and already I can see from my notes I've got half a dozen security packages installed now and there will definitely be more coming up as we install more packages. So as I say, although I used to go through and install virtually all the security packages, it was unnecessary to do them all up front. Um, it's best just to, as with most of BLFS, identify what you need and then just go ahead and build a package that you need after you've installed all the requirements, all the dependencies for that package. Okay, so let's get rid of that tab. Let's have a quick eyeball of Shadow. So we've got the two requirements. We've got Linux PAM and Cracklib installed now. Um, so there's an important command. The installation command is shown below for installations where PAM has been installed and Shadow is being reinstalled, which is what we're doing. If you're reinstalling Shadow to provide strong password support with the uh, using the Cracklib library without Linux PAM. So just saying what you need to do if you haven't installed Linux PAM. So we can ignore that. 
So we've got all those commands there to rebuild um, Shadow. That command there to install it. It doesn't look like there's any additional options. There's just the explanation of these commands and this option here. Some configuration. And then configuring PAM to work with Shadow. So there's lots of copying and pasting to do on this package. So although we've already downloaded Shadow, I'm going to download it again. Um, doesn't really matter. You could copy it from the Linux from scratch, but I'm going to download it. So let's get rid of that. Um, we'll go into the Shadow package now. I'm going to come out of here ready to receive the shadow package. Tidy that one up. Okay, so there's still some files that have been modified as root that have remained on the disk. So I'll just surround that with an su command. If I do an ls minus l, yep, the only directory I've got there is quite good to check occasionally that you haven't left any directories there um, in the sources BLFS folder. Um, I forgot to clean them up which can happen sometimes. Okay so Shadow, so like I said I'm going to download it again. It's only a relatively small package so it's not going to take up a great deal of space. So it's done. I'm going to get that extracting. And while that's doing, just quickly read this again. So we've got a set command, but that's part of the important information. If you remember on the graphical browser, again, it's, it, it's so much easier to see on the graphical browser. Remember we said we we're going to ignore this important um, note here because it doesn't apply to us. So we need to copy everything from here, from the said S groups, all the way down to make. So copy from here. Set into the shadow directory. Paste that in. Press space for the next bit. Paste that in and wait a couple of minutes or so for this to uh, build. Okay, that's all built. Let's go and see what to do next. No test suite, so we just need to run this command to install it. It's done. Skip over command explanations. We need to start looking about 
uh, configuring it. So stock configuration for the user ad utility may not be desirable for your installation. One default parameter causes user ad to create a mailbox for file mailbox file for any newly created user. User ad will make the group ownership of this file to the mail group with 0660 permissions. If you would prefer that these mailbox files are not created by user ad, issue the following command as the user user root user. So if you remember in Linux from scratch we had the same issue and I disabled it because um, I don't find any use for them personally. If you do then obviously um, ignore enter uh, you know ignore this command don't don't put it in but I am going to put it in there configuring Linux PAM to work with Shadow so note the rest of this page is devoted to configuring Shadow to work properly with Linux PAM. If you do not have Linux PAM installed, and to reinstall Shadow to support strong passwords via Cracklib library, <clears throat> no con further configuration is required. So that's the same circumstances as that important note at the top of the page. Uh, so that, again, it doesn't apply to us, so we do need to carry on. Um, so it lists the configuration files there. It gives some information about configuring Linux PAM. It says it can be a complex task, but luckily they've uh, given us some default scripts. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and also they've given a link there uh, with information about configuring um, PAM. The, so the first one's a login program, and it describes what it's going to do there. So we can just copy all of this. Paste that in, move to the next page, and copy this here, and paste the rest of that in. That's done some changes to that file there. And then we've got some etc PAM D files. So the previous one was the login defaults, and now we're going to create some actual um, PAM files for specific. Uh, program. So, for example, the first one you can see is for the login program. So, we'll copy this. Okay, this looks like it's a big configuration file. Next page. That's that one done. Next one's for password, a short one. Next one's for SU. Change. And lastly, we've got a set of programs, which set of um, configuration for programs, which all share the same configuration, basically. So the commands to run here are this for, do, and done uh, structure. So you can see that's put the same. Um, it's basically copied the change program there and then it modifies that copy for each of these names as appropriate. Okay, warning at this point, you should do a simple test to see if Shadow is working as expected on another terminal and log in as, open another terminal, log in as a user, then SU to root. If you do not see any errors, then all is well and you should proceed with the rest of the configuration. So I'm gonna to go to my terminal four so it says to log in as a um, normal user, just log in as a user. So I'm on terminal four, log in as Kernatex. That's my user, it's logged in okay. Then it said to SU to root. Okay, now that's not working, but that's not a great concern because it does suggest uh, a reason why that might happen. And an obvious reason for the error, if the user is not in the group wheel. 
and it gives you a command here on the next page of how to add the user to the wheel group. So what this does is it's a user mod, user modify, um, add is the minus A, or sorry, um, minus A is append, I think it is. Uh, G is a, an additional group, capital G, and you specify the group and then the user you want to add that to. So I'll copy this. I'll copy all this to remind me that I've got to add in the username afterwards. I'm going to go back to my Terminal 4 first of all because I'll have to log out of Kerner Text because uh, if I make the change it won't be reflected until I log in again. Go back to my first terminal to put this command in. Rub out this user and put in Kerner Text. And if I do groups Kerner Text now it should show that the wheel has been added to Kerner Text's list of groups. I go back to my terminal four, uh, type in kernel text. Right, that might be because I moved the cursor key at the login. So it's logged in. I can look at my groups here as well. You can see the wheel is there. I'm going to try to go to the root, and you can see it's gone to the root that's now working successfully. I'm also going to try. There shouldn't be any different, but I'm going to try and do this command here where I take, I think the difference between this and the previous one was SU. I think the, off the top of my head, the SU minus takes on the environment of the root user. That's working. I'm also, as a final confidence test, just going to log in directly as root and that works as well. So that shows that the PAM configuration and the shadow configuration are working as expected. Um, there's some more here. I'm just going to read this on the um, graphical browser. So we're down here. We've done all these. So there's a bit about checking, configuring, login. Yes, we do need to do these too. So it's for controlling access to the system. Um, so it's changing access. So they're using the PAM access module along with the securityaccess.conf file. And similarly for the limits.conf file. And there's another caution there saying test the login capabilities of the system for logging out. Um, and it will cause a permanent lockout during requiring a boot from an external source. This has happened to me once before, many, many years ago. Um, I couldn't track down what I had done wrong, but it did involve booting from another environment, so basically a rescue CD or a live CD or USB. And basically what happened was, because I was locked out, I had to mount the system as you would do in Linux from scratch, mount the virtual file systems, true into it, and I rebuilt the shadow package in Shroot and redid the configuration commands and that, that worked. So I'd obviously missed out something or done something wrong. Um, so if you do get the case where you get the lockout, the lockout, that's what you'll need to do to rebuild the shadow. If rebuilding the shadow doesn't work, then that implies there's something wrong with the Linux PAM installation. So you'd need to reinstall Linux PAM and for safety I'd reinstall Shadow as well immediately afterwards. So I'll do these two commands here. Paste them in. And then once again, I'm going to go to my fourth term. It doesn't matter which terminal I'm going to. You, you can do whichever one you want. I'm just, uh, because I've got a few open, I'm just trying to make it simpler for me to um, manage the terminals that are open. Uh, so I'm going to log in as kernel text first of all. That's fine. Try SU. Oops, so we'll type the password right again. That's fine. I'm going to try SU with the minus. 
that's fine and last of all I'm going to log in directly as root and that's fine as well so I'm happy that the login capabilities of this machine haven't been compromised by rebuilding shadow or installing Linux PAM all the configuration has been done correctly uh, so that is the end of shadow so that again is in security I'll cross that one off close that tab down and back here I'm going to do left arrow and go back to firstly the next pan and then back to the uh, security uh, chapter in the book I'll go back here to my first terminal I think I've still got a second terminal haven't I yes um, and come out of the root go back to the sources directory and clean up shadow and move on